Hey guys, so welcome to the new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the modes tab in Autolytics documentation. So we're basically going to go over all different modes that they have in the documentation. We also have videos covering some of the modes. So let's just jump straight into the modes tab in the documentation. We can see that we both have a train, validation, predict mode, and then we also have an export mode when we actually want to do inference and deploy our models. We can also do tracking directly with Autolytics, and then they also have this benchmark mode, which we're going to cover in this video as well. So we also have some videos about some of them here, but again, these modes are very important and also very useful when you're playing around with Ultralytics and when you're training your own custom update detection model, or if you want to use them for segmentation and so on. So first of all, you can read like an introduction here, what all the different modes are doing. In this video here, we're both going to take a look at the validation mode and also the benchmark mode, because all the other modes here, they are already covered here on the documentation and on Autolytics YouTube channel. So first of all here, let's just jump straight into the validation tab. We can see when we want to validate our model and also how we can do it. This is specifically used for tuning our hyperparameters if you want to optimize and make our model even better. So you can see like why validated Autolytics model, precision, convenience, flexibility, and also for hyperparameter tuning that are just talked about. We can both do it with some automated settings, multimetric support, CLI and also the Python API data compatibility. But we also have these user examples here, but you can basically just copy paste them directly into your own Python script. They have some different arguments here with image size, batch size, if you want to save the results as a JSON file, if you want to use half precision device that we want to run it on, CPU or GPU, intersection over union and so on. Let's now going to take a look at the benchmark tab. So we're here after we've trained and validated our model, we can go in and actually like do this benchmarking test if we want to evaluate our model, its performance on various like real world scenarios. So it is basically just to get like informed decisions, resource allocation, optimization of the models and also cost efficiency. So we can go in and benchmark it on different types of like formats that we export our model into, but it could also just be like for testing it out on your hardware and the model performance on different data sets and so on. So here we can see some user examples as well. We can see the support export formats, the key metrics in our benchmark mode. So here we can see that we're going to run benchmark on all support export formats, including ONNX, Tensor RT, and we can also see all the arguments that we can specify. If you want to use integer eight quantization or floating point 16 quantization, it would actually be pretty, pretty like cool to see this int eight quantization if we actually lose any accuracy and compare some of the models when we export it into different formats. So let's not just copy paste this example here, just into our Python script and just copy paste it in. Let's open a new terminal. So right now we're just going to run the program. So first of all here, when we take a look at the benchmark results, we can see we have the PyTorch model. Um, we can see the inference speed here. So 68 millisecond inference when we're doing like our validation, it is 30, uh, 35. We're running this on RTX 3070. If it's called a bit further down, we can now see that we actually like export into Torch script. So when we're doing inference now, we can see that we get down here to four milliseconds inference, which is actually like significantly faster compared to the PyTorch model. So let's try to go down and see if we have some more. So we have the ONNX now. So successful here for ONNX. We act like the text the exact same optics here, but now we can see that ONNX here is running 21 milliseconds. So we can also optimize it for running on the CPU. Right now we're doing it on the GPU. Can maybe go up here and try that. So we can just hit CPU. Maybe we also want to go inside the documentation again and specify the int 8. So we can also specify this parameter here. So int 8 should be equal to true. So let's go ahead and use a uh, and quantize model. Let's rerun it. So if we just scroll up here to the top again, we can see for the PyTorch model, it is running around 70 milliseconds inference, and this should be running on the CPU. So yeah, so here now we can see that we're running on the CPU. I have an i9 uh, 13th generation CPU. We can see that Torch script is, um, the Torch script here is actually like slower when we run it on the CPU. So it's 115 milliseconds inference. Let's go down and see if we can see some results for um, ONNX. So ONNX is faster, 80, uh, 84 milliseconds inference speed. And for OpenVINO here, we can see we have 23 milliseconds inference running this on the CPU. So running this on the CPU optimized for Intel hardware we can actually get the exact same inference speed compared to some of the export formats running on the GPU. This just shows how important it is to actually run these benchmarks on your models when you have trained them, especially if you have custom hardware, if you want to run it on the edge. And again, you just have to run this single function. They have different arguments on the documentation. 
test it out you can see the output directly you can compare the models and then you're ready to go you can then deploy your models into production so thank you guys for watching this video here i hope you have learned a ton this benchmark feature and all the modes tabs on the ultra latest documentation and for the framework is really cool definitely go check it out play around with some of the code snippets that they have and use it in your own applications and projects hope to see you guys in the next video stay tuned bye for now